Welcome to the Garden of Eden. Dammy be asking the questions for the answers that you want to hear. All you gotta do is sit back, grab a chair, or listen up while you clean and cook. Take a leaf from the creative's book. These gems open your mind and your heart. Okay, the show's gonna start. Cheese. Welcome back, everybody, to the Garden of Eden podcast, uh, where ideas grow. I hope you're doing well today, Growth Gang. Um, you're in store for what should be a fucking mad episode today. Very, very interesting. <laughs> also, I, I wanna, I wanna look straight into the camera and shout out to my people, my boys. I'm sure you lot are gonna love this episode. Um, today on the podcast, we have um, Virag Tierra who is the, an executive coach at The Natural Lifestyles, which, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> is uh, a, a, a platform with uh, coaches helping men improve their dating and lifestyle. Um, and the other thing which I found quite interesting is you also say that you're a space ninja high on love, <laughs> which I'm oh, sure yeah. we'll dive into more. Um, but how are you doing today, Virag? <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your invite. Thank you so much for making this happen, especially respect to you choosing the female coach out of five male coach in the natural <laughs> lifestyles. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for your trust and thank you for your invite. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I found it like, uh, I find it really interesting hearing a perspective different within the team because as you said, there's majority men who are in the coaching team so you as a woman who's in that environment as well I'm sure there must be so many things that you're seeing differently to how mm -hmm. most guys would see it and just like learning about that would be would be sick and I'm sure just hearing about the things you've learned in general while being part of the team it is going to help so many more people and because I'm a little bit nosy I want to know <laughs> <laughs> You can be um, more nosy than that, don't worry. <laughs> but I just want to add, like, thank you so much for pointing that out because, you know, we have, like, a quiet, I don't know what, what is um, what is the big YouTube channel. Like, I don't know exactly, but we have more, like, 100,000, uh, 100,000, yeah, followers, like 110,000 or something like that. And I see a lot of comments under, under our videos when I'm coaching, you know, the skepticals. Like, oh, a woman is teaching men how to meet women. And, and it's exactly what you're saying. Like, it is a different perspective. And how would you know what's good for a woman if you never ask a woman? Don't talk to women. So for me, it's like, I just can't stand, you know, I'm, I'm like that. I'm just texting, like, come on, come on, man, try me. You know, I'm going to show you how yeah. a woman is teaching a man because I know how it feels. I've been approached a million times. I know what's good. I know what's the right thing to say. And like, who would know better than a woman? So yeah. I'm pretty sure that James Marshall, who's the founder of uh, this beautiful company, he mm -hmm. is a smart person, you know, he knows his shit. And Definitely. like Shout basically these guys who's questioning, yeah, who's questioning his decision to hire a woman with a very good reason, you know, like it just, mm. it, it just doesn't come, come together. Like why a woman is teaching men? Well, yeah. come and figure it out <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because um a lot of like I've just realized just in general with the internet and putting content out people always have some shit to say um about others and it's it's uh it's it's one of those ones where I guess you being the different outlier in the group just makes you an easier target but for those who yeah. are really switched on it's pretty clear to see the vast benefits of having someone <laughs> who you're trying to attract it within the team it just makes sense um and yeah. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna touch on it immediately but I guess you opened up the topic um so it would be good to start there so obviously you're a female dating coach that's helping men specifically and a lot of things that people say within the dating community is don't ask a fish how to catch fish as an analogy for not listening to women about how to get women. So 
whenever you're met with that level of, because I would, I would probably class it as disrespect from men who think that you're not able to coach. How do you, like, how do you navigate that? Especially if that's coming from somebody who is supposedly supposed to be a, a student or a potential student as well, who might be like, what's this, what's this woman going to teach me? And has that attitude? <laughs> how do you, how do you come against or how do you overcome that? Well, first, I don't give a shit. I think that's the very simple way to put it. I just really don't give a shit because I know myself and I know on many, like thousands of men who we already taught and we have 100% success. No one comes back complaining like, my life didn't change. I didn't have a transformation. I'm the same person who I was. After even two, one to two, three days, we are like, wow, what is this? And I'm a part of that. So first, I think not really taking it on yourself because it's not your problem, it's their reality. So they have the right to think the way they think because obviously based on their experience, you know, how they grew up, how their mama treated them, everything adds together to a point where they come to us and they start to question a woman. And straight, I'm like, okay, then what did you bring to the picture? Why do you think like that? I want to understand what's behind that. But to be honest, our students, they are not like that. They are very humble. They are very nice people. They are like ready to learn. You have to have an open mind, an open heart. And then actually the transformation can happen. So they don't really question me. Like maybe they look at me like, who's that hot chick, you know, in the WhatsApp group or whatever. <laughs> But that's it. That's like, it's all, it's all what I heard. Like, who's that? And then obviously I'm on the YouTube, like, like the picture videos, whatever. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was like this, like, who's that chick? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's not that hard to, to handle it, to be honest. But yeah, when I see some comments like this, I'm like, I'm, I'm not pissed or anything, but I'm just texting them, like, come and take our course and experience it for yourself. Let's see mm. how you feel. Maybe I change your mind. Maybe not. Maybe it's not your time to change. Maybe it's not your time to transform yourself, but it's totally fine too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're very like centered in your, I can already feel it. Like you're like, yeah, this is what I'm about. And if you're doubting it, then this isn't for you. And you just focus on exactly. the people that are. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good um, mentality to have. I ask that because Thank you. one of the things I'm conscious about is for me, like I'm trying to build this podcasting platform and I know that if I want it to be as big as it, as I think I want it to be, I know I'm going to have to come up against that. And I've always had a bit of a difficult time, like, you know, thinking, damn, if, what if people start, you know, creating threads in the comments where like they're all discussing oh this guy's shit mm -hmm. <laughs> he can't speak well or whatever um so yeah I'm definitely gonna borrow from this like in in maybe two years when it gets to that point I'm gonna come back to this episode and be like right yeah yeah just, oh, don't, give nice. just don't give a shit <laughs> um no but it's it's part of it and and you know yeah. it's also another perspective if you just think about it that you make people move doesn't matter which direction what you're doing it's moving them so even the bad comment actually you can use it something like build yourself learn from it maybe you can adjust some things if you see like so many people are like don't like I don't know how can you not like mm. someone the way they speak I don't know your English accent or I don't even understand that so it's yeah. just like something that you decide if you take it on yourself or just okay let's build something from that and just like again I'm, I'm moving people then you know that you do something good yeah That's it. yeah yeah some people will leave hateful comments other people ask you to be on their podcast so yeah I, I, god I bless them <laughs> um my growth gang quick interruption thank you for watching this week's episode of the podcast remember if you like the episodes like and subscribe on youtube and go follow on Spotify or all the other audio platforms that you listen to this podcast on. Most importantly though, if you know someone who can get value from this episode, click that little share button at the bottom and go send it to them so they can check out this good shit. Thanks again, back to the show. I wanted to go a bit more into the overarching theme of the natural lifestyles, because um, I think we touched on what the company 
does uh, a little bit earlier and they've been in the game for you know a long time over 10 years um <laughs> and it's a very from what i've seen of their content um tnl um is a very elusive crew so they're very powerful <laughs> there's a lot of people who bring a lot of different skill sets backgrounds um ideas to the table yet at the same time even being so public through youtube and through other social platforms it also seems like a very elusive group so i was curious to know how did you even come into contact with tnl as a as a crew before like when when you first became aware of them what 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 uh what happened <laughs> well you know i'm pretty sure you know because i can tell you did your research that our residential was in Budapest, Hungary, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And basically they were like, James was very smart again. He was looking for a country where are like people who speaks English, because we learn, I'm Hungarian. We learn it from very young age. We learn from kindergarten through primary school, high school, and then it's up to a person like how far they take the English speaking. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we had amazing nightlife. We had a lot of foreigners coming here and it's cheap country compared to the UK or America, you know, even where you pay, even in Europe, where you pay in euros, we still have our own currency and yeah. that makes everything cheaper. So basically it was the perfect melting pot for TNL to start something. And I don't even remember where I saw some kind of advertisement because we use um, role play girls. So basically the role right. play girls are the girls who are um, helping you to, to the, um, practice different kind of frameworks, conversational frameworks uh, from basically the scratch, how to do a right handshake with the woman, how to hug a woman on the right way mm. um, and so many things, but actually practicing on a woman. And you don't have that many yeah. chance, except like you have a female friend who's like, hey, can I practice conversational framework? Can I hug you like this or hug you like that? Let's be honest, it doesn't happen very often that no, it's just no, like it's... a random party party team, like, let's do this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I saw some kind of advertisement like six years ago. I think it's more, mm. more than six years ago. And I was just like, applying to some kind of hostess job because uh to be honest i am an introvert and i was always an introvert and no i started to push way. myself seriously yes. you're an introvert <laughs> no <laughs> like almost all tnl people yes Ser i i you've... really i was the yes <laughs> you're very like you've got a lot of energy so that surprises me yeah, I was the one, you know, when I was a child, I was like hiding under tables, not speaking to anyone. But then wow. I was just like, okay, you have to break out of that. So I started to do hostess jobs, and like different kind of conferences for like medical conferences, informatical conferences, um, where I had to talk to the people because I was the plant in the corner, you know, like standing there, <laughs> like being pretty and like waiting for people to like come to you and ask like where is the toilet and shit like that <laughs> oh my so, god <laughs> <laughs> so obviously they start to like chitty chat with you they kind of approach you a little bit and mm. it's a learning experience as well to be a hostess i'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, hostess girls know what i'm talking about but that's my yeah. way to like open up you know like learn to communicate and not to be too shy to like whatever like i hated to make phone calls i just didn't want to talk to people in, in mm. it's that, that level of it <laughs> wow so wow. um so you've had your own so form of this, transformation in essence it's but sorry that's on. a very small percentage yeah it's a very small percentage because obviously i brought my trauma and my relationship and whatever i brought in my childhood next to that but of course like how can you teach something if you never experienced it Mm. um so basically i was doing this hostess learning experience and then i yeah. applied for some kind of hostess jobs which turned out to be the role play model to tnl oh shit. Um, did so when when you went for this job and because obviously mm -hmm. i've seen some of the videos where um for for, for those listening as virag described 
it's literally role playing scenarios of uh, on, on dates generally, so that men are mm. more comfortable with like touching and and other aspects of a date. Um, oh, the question slipped. Right. So you think it's a hostess job, and you come and you see that it's. <laughs> <laughs> more of this role play stuff how did you feel it in the moment because that must have been a surprise right well I absolutely loved it I had a crazy <laughs> life even before and yeah. and I just found my family seriously like even outside of the job I wasn't really doing the role plays we just started to hang out together and mm-hmm. many different kind of life situations so basically I was a very good friend yeah and that's what was my space, you know, guaranteed in TNL, that I helped them so many ways. I was just a very good friend. They could rely on me in so many ways. And because I really felt like they are like fucking crazy, just like me. And finally, someone mm. understands me. <laughs> and they really yeah. understood me for, for from the beginning. <laughs> when you find mm. your people, that's it. You find your people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's how. Wow. We'll play. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just then I just felt like you know every time um I felt that I just don't have enough time with the students mm. I every time I started to coach them naturally you know the natural so I was natural in it I started to coach them started to like give them different kind of advices what you wouldn't get from um, a female perspective in other cases and mm. obviously I was there for James and the other guys from the beginning because I love them so much so after time, James was just like, I don't know, I guess life wanted me to be there. And yeah. James was like, oh, can you help out in this and this workshop? And can you jump in for mm. this? And just like random coaching, it was a kind of transformation as well that I just became a coach. But it wasn't like, okay, from officially now you are graduated and whatever. It's yeah. not how it happens in TNL. It's just like, oh, <laughs> can you do this? And can you do that? Yeah, sure, I can. And it's like, oh, you are a coach. Mm. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So it's more of a like seamless transition. That you, like it was just like suddenly it's like, oh, okay, I've arrived at this point. And now because yeah. of I, all these years, I didn't even, it makes sense. Exactly. I didn't even dare to think about it. Like few of them, they've already telling me like, you should be a coach. And I'm like, no, fuck no. Mm. Like, but why would I be, you know? It's like, again, just yeah. humble and just why, why would I be a coach or whatever? But mm. it happened. <laughs> mm. But how um, did you find that out about us? I, I'm curious at the same time, like from your perspective, oh, how did you what? find the natural you're, lifestyle you're putting me on the spot right now I can't even oh yeah <laughs> um <laughs> th- it wasn't supposed to go this way I'm the one asking the questions no no I'm joking <laughs> I'm joking um so I found out about it because my friend um I'd just gone through a breakup um a friend yeah yeah a friend like my my oh, best okay. friend actually one of my one of my best action. friends okay but yeah 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 no 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 for real one of my <laughs> one of my really one of my really close friends um he sent me a video after my breakup that had James talking about a few things this was years years ago and I remember listening to it and it's actually this is actually quite uh, this is actually taking me forward onto one of the next questions I have actually but um I'd heard about the pickup industry years ago like maybe 2013, 2014. And I had a really bad impression of the industry um, from some of the books that I'd read. So I'd read, I think I'd read about this thing called the October Man Sequence. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I remember at the time I was in a really, let's say insecure relationship where I'd read that and I was thinking, oh my God, is someone going to steal my girlfriend? (laughs) So I remember like damning the whole pickup community but then when my friend sent me this video of James, um, I think it was one where he's got like a sword and he's, I think it's the fire <laughs> principles course. one. He's got like, <laughs> yeah, he's got the sword. Um, and, <laughs> uh, he's always think, fucking around with his sword. I love to watch it. It's a meditation to watch him with his sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've gathered from his video since then, but um in this video he's talking about fire principles and I was watching it and I was like oh this is pretty sound advice like this is pretty good um and then from there I just 
started tuning in every now and again and then I started seeing other people so Shay Matthews as well shout out to him I'm trying to get him on the podcast as well so maybe maybe you could ask him I'm gonna help you don't worry (laughs) thank you Vera I have some influence (laughs) (laughs) um so I started watching his videos um Tony Solo as well when he was there because obviously I could relate a lot with him being a black man Mm -hmm. in Europe doing his thing so um I just liked a lot of the content so that's how I came across um TNL initially um and I always will check in with them um but what I was curious to hear about from you as well just more specifically on the pickup uh, industry because for me the first things that I saw were people like obviously RSD and other similar types of companies and the way that they um, advise men to um, uh, <laughs> I guess approach the whole dating and woman thing um, as a woman yourself how did you initially feel when you came into contact with the pickup industry like how uh, and and maybe maybe it's not something that happened because of how TNL is very holistic, but maybe along the way you came to realize oh there's this whole like pickup industry. So what was what was uh, your thoughts about it when you became aware that it was a thing like that? I think it was totally natural. Like I'm not delusional. I know how it works, and I used to do also party hostessing which is like a part of like you know partying with men and just being someone fun and and they keep trying to hit on you and you just keep rejecting everyone and that's your job so for me like I always had male friends and and I have a brother like I was always myself very masculine in so many ways so I I was even the person who usually like could approach and and pick up girls boys whatever because it was so natural for me so it was not a surprise at all um but more like the um, the angle how the natural lifestyle is approaching the approach industry is just um so different from from everything else even if you of course you did your research but for the other guys who's listening to this if you do your research and we always ask our um, students we have a thing called client file where it's like two hours to fill it out, but we really want to get to know them before we get into coaching them. And we always ask them like, um, why do you like us more? Why do you like us better? You know, what would you like to see more on our YouTube video? And they always say like, they just like us more because we are more kind of like come out more genuine. And we also have this holistic approach, like targeting, approaching and pick up back to self-healing. So Mm. it's not just about like you, whatever version of yourself is getting out, you know, pick up ladies. And then Mm. you either destroy a person, you hurt the person, you don't know how to make a, a woman feel good. And here you know, on the other end, there is us who is teaching first to look inside of you and mm. and search inside. Like, you know, it's already like a spiritual way of looking at things, like, like not to blame the outside world, why it's happening to me. Well, let's look inside and figure out why it's happening to you. So we took we take it back to you and yourself and we are looking for traumas to heal, you know, any kind of uh, thought patterns that could be reprogrammed because it's all about like programming the mind what you are used to you know what kind of habits uh, are you used to so with different kind of tools but mostly meditation body awareness qigong um james has a very really serious kung fu background just like shay and just like i do so it was oh, again sick. like yeah sick right oh, like everything just too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just came together like everything I did before them, meditation, kung fu, everything. I was just mm. perfectly like fitting in the puzzle with with all my knowledge and all my experience. Um mm. obviously I just had to pick up on any kind of like frameworks or whatever which I already knew because of the role play classes. So it was just like perfectly from from James is like putting me in the puzzle and that's done and I knew everything already. So um mm. 
self-healing. It's it's a very important part of of discovering yourself because after that you get out of there and you know meet other people connecting and if you don't know what to offer you don't know who you are then how do you expect to connect to anyone your friends your family so Mm -hmm. we are different in that and for me it was very attractive obviously that I'm a very spiritual person I'm doing my own self-healing for fucking 20 years I have my own struggles and I see that the guys like like seriously every one of us have their own struggles so based on that it's just to- so different from what you see on YouTube like let's pick up and fuck girls you know as many as we can and then like let's count I fucked 100 women and then that's yeah. the man yeah that's not the, our approach <laughs> yeah honestly I, I fully hear you because I think that was what put me off initially when I was seeing some other stuff like it was very, um, I guess, how you would describe how, um, like, working at an American corporate office sounds like. It was just that, but applied <laughs> to women and lifestyle. Like, yeah, I got a HB9 and, you know, I got five lines. Like, it was very, um, very results-based. And I think what I actually, what actually made me, um, what actually made me really... Uh, love the tnl message was the level of introspection that was in there and the level of focus on this is about you and your experience with yourself um in life and just that having that caveat made it easier to not put that same like uh sticker on the company and actually then take in the message and i think as time goes on you know you start to realize actually way more that this is just all about an inside game and and like you said obviously we have our Mm -hmm. patterns we have our processes and things that we have to heal everyone but um the more Mm. I listen to the content and and the more you I guess the more you approach this like stage of development the more you do that the more you work on those things just naturally I think um so yeah no the work you guys are doing genuinely like is is fucking amazing for real for thank real. you so much you should come um, and try hey well maybe i need to get my peas up first though <laughs> 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 i need to get my peas up i can't lie yeah but one I know. Day... we can talk about it too <laughs> <laughs> maybe you get some discount <laughs> Oh my god, she's selling. Virag, you don't rest. You don't rest. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like it's a one, like one, I mean, it's not a one-time experience because we have a student who's like fucking addicted now and just coming to all workshops all the time, which is yeah. amazing because there's always place for improvement. But mm. you never really know until you try. Like imagine you already have this this amazing opinion and you really have like a, a great picture. I can tell like the way you are speaking about it just by watching our videos. You know, we don't really have that often until someone comes and actually gets the experience. But imagine that like 10, 100 times more than what you think now. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to sell it to my girlfriend first uh, before before. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's all about learning more about what feels good for a woman. So it's not just about like picking yeah. up girls, but how to make them yeah. feel actually really good. You learn oh, to my... listen, to mm. understand everything mm. what a girl wants. You're very good. I can sell it to her. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After this podcast, I'll put you in a call with her. Yeah, and you can you can ask her. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I would um, love to. <laughs> Um, so obviously I'm I'm very uh, open to the idea of men going to workshops that you guys run and, and learning about this kind of um, information and and beginning the process essentially. But for a lot of people, um, a lot of men in particular, there's a lot of fear and self-sabotage that would block them from actually coming to a workshop, working on themselves, even 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 taking the idea of okay I'm struggling with dating and I need to learn because there might be an idea that as a man you're supposed to know these are things that are supposed to be innate and if you don't know them there's something wrong with you so 
what kind of things do you um, say to men to help them jump over those barriers? Because ultimately, if they don't do anything, I guess they they stay in the same position. So, how, but obviously, this fear can be really consuming, like really consuming for a lot of people. Um, whether that's because of judgment, whether it's because it might make the problem real for them, how do you help them get over that? Get over like coming to the workshop? Or you mean? either coming to the workshop or just even thinking about learning how to approach women, how to speak to women, how to improve their dating. They might not, they might even be scared to even do anything, if that makes sense. So, how do you help them overcome that? Well, first, obviously, they have to have the bravery to come to the workshop and they have to have the money. But obviously, they are not the cheapest <laughs> company. So there are some, some factors, obviously, who can become our student. Um, but also, like, we can work just an amount of time in the year. So it's a kind of good filter for us as well. Um, but at the same time, so the filter is obviously financial. And then realizing that you need help, realizing that you need to change. That's always the first step. So who comes to our workshop, who decides to pay, who have the money, whatever, and then actually they come to the workshop, they already took the best step of their life. And after that, we just take over control. We, we have so many ways to teach them how to overcome that fear. You know, of course, it's a total unnatural situation they never did this no one ever fucking did this before because they don't teach mm. this in school like we never learn how to connect to people we learn fucking math and chemistry and physics and obviously you can tell i was a bad student because i talk about <laughs> it like this but <laughs> yeah. but but never really like valuing each other like really deep kind of and and obviously we can touch here the buddhist way of teaching because they actually had schools where they teach values, meditation, what is mm -hmm. ego, how to control the ego, how not to hurt people around yourself because your ego is just so fucking blind and, and just unleashed. So mm -hmm. we never learn this usually, right? We are not like monks growing up in a Buddhist school in the mountain. Yeah. We are just like whatever the word puts us to, like this is the school system, which is we can blame the word for it or just accept them like, okay, the way it is. Mm. Um, so you can't blame anyone for not knowing any of this, but we actually have the any kind of tool that just like you know encouraging and just make them feel safe in our environment. Like, okay, we got you, you know, we know what to do. Once you trust us, and once you just like let the process happen to you, then mm. we are doing basically like a magic show and like reprogramming you reframing you and it's just like bomb the new you is ready and good to go that's mm. what happens <laughs> mm. that's magic <laughs> yeah yeah no from for people listening um if you're curious you should definitely go to the natural lifestyles channel and check out um some of their like documentary style vlogs would you say yeah documentary style vlogs yeah yeah where they show thank you how, so much <laughs> yeah where they, where they show how men who come on the workshops actually go through the stages of um that 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 Virag just described and the magic that emerges from that um I wanted to talk more specifically though with the with the fear thing so let's say we've got somebody who's made the call to come on a workshop um or sent a message or whatever to you guys and let, let's say they can afford to come into the workshop but they are they are just generally scared and you're on the phone to them and they're like oh but you know what will my family think you know what will my friends think if they know this is what I'm doing or I'm scared because I like I, I'm supposed to be a man you know they have this conflicting they have this conflicting thing going on where they want to improve but they are also fearful of stepping into the arena how would you speak to them in that specific situation to get them over the line if that makes sense like yeah, yeah. how would you convince them in that at that point well <laughs> again in sales 
we call that objection handling, right? Like everything <laughs> is objection handling. Yeah. So um, I'm not I'm not a part of the sales team, but I could be, as you can as you can tell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we have <laughs> we we genuinely care. So you can feel that um, we we can tell them like you know if you let your fear stop you forever, then nothing is going to change in your life. Do you like your life now the way it is? Why did you call us? Why did you think to come to us? Definitely something is not right in your life. You want to change something, right? <laughs> but I'm just yeah. warming up in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you catch up with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, that's that's one thing where you, when you, when you realize that um, that you actually already look for these videos or came across this video, something something got your attention about it. So let's talk about it. What's wrong? You know, what do you want to change? Um, if you are afraid of it, it's never going to change. But I would also advise just for you to see it's not a bad sales all the time. I really think just watching the free content can help so much to everyone. Mm. Just what we post all kinds of different kinds of videos just watching all those contents like you can find on youtube it helps so much to everyone and of course if you feel like if you feel like that okay you want to know more you want to learn more whatever then contact our sales team but i don't even think that many cases like i think most of the cases is they they don't need totally us it's just like so many guys they just oh okay i can do that and they go outside and do the approach on the streets just because mm -hmm. you watch our videos Mm. so um it's it's again stepping over the fear many people they don't tell their family which i don't agree to because i think family is the most important uh in everyone's life like they are our roots and i don't like to lie to family and i wouldn't do it anymore obviously you're a teenager you do all kinds of shit but you grow yeah. up and you value where you came from so I'm, I'm not advising anyone to, to, to lie to family um, yeah. or friends. But uh, once they realize that it's actually a good thing and they experience it, or we just tell them, like, you're not doing anything wrong. You're connecting to your masculine energy. You are discovering yourself. And once they try and they tell their friends or their family, they actually find this, wow, this is so cool. This is so mm. cool you do this all for yourself. So it's just like a pre-judgmental mind again, you know, stepping in. It's your own judging about some situation. And you are like, like thinking that they're going to think that and just like a whole mess of overthinking, yeah. which, we you know, it's fucking useless, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You got to So that. stepping over that. Stepping over that fear and just let's try and be brave. Like you have to have balls. If you don't have balls, how are you going to fuck anyone? Whew. I, Virag said so it. That's the Ooh. question here. <laughs> 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 and hey. that's my main wisdom for today. Good night, everyone. Mic drop, <laughs> mic drop, mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that, re that reframe is important, but ultimately... Like you said, if you're feeling like your life is shit right now, then you have to do something. You have to do something. Um, so, yeah, if anybody who is listening to this and is feeling like on the edge, then I guess this is the this might be the call to action that you needed. Like, yo, do you want like you said earlier? I love that. Do you like your life right now? Do you want it to stay the same? If not, you have to get outside and do something so um mm -hmm. yeah and and let's say we've got someone listening to listening to the podcast who's like right right now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to come on a workshop even though Virag has sold it so well like if I had my account <laughs> you ready, sold it not me <laughs> you're better in this <laughs> no, no we're saying we're just we're, we're we're supporting each other in this it's a it's a team effort yeah. um yeah <laughs> especially from a woman's perspective what kind of um dating principles do you think a man should focus on to accelerate his chances 
um, at improving what's going on in his life. Um, what, 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 uh, maybe there's a few things that you could speak to that someone today, right now, could start working on that will start giving them results, or maybe not necessarily results, but they'll start to see some changes in a short to medium period of time. What kind of things would you say? Persistency, like you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a very good quality. You can reach so many things. Obviously, if you put your mind up to something, then more likely at some point it's gonna happen. So willing to change, willing to do something, uh, realizing which areas you can improve to. But I think the most important thing, what most men don't think about, is actually being genuinely interested in the woman and her soul and in her personality. We are not just a hole or two holes or I don't know how many holes we have you can put in, <laughs> but we are not that, you know? It just, yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's just how like walking holes, we feel like walking pussies and you just see this huge vagina and then you go like, even today I get like this kind of like, I want to fuck you. And that's like the like whistling and I can't whistle yeah. obviously, but like imagine there, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you're fucking sexy. And this is what I got. This is what I got. That's, that's the compliment yeah. when, when, when you walk on the streets. So yeah. obviously we want to make women feel good on a way that you actually care about who they are because they are individually a whole universe. You know, we are different mm. and unique on every way. Doesn't matter what's your type or how is the look. Like, for example, we always say to our students who's like, oh, she's not my type. I'm not going to approach. We're like, you're practicing. You get to know so many women in the matter of understanding female nature. It's not about like, you have like a kind of, okay, I like the stripper or the porn star or whatever kind of look or mm -hmm. the girl next door. It's more like what's inside and that's going to make her even more attractive than probably when you just looked at the walking vagina. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the difference here in just listening. So start going out there. Obviously, if you want to do approaches and want to try, for us, the warming up is connect the word, like pet a dog, say hello to people. What's, it's what we do as well. You know, we go with the mm -hmm. student, let's say hello to people, but they think I'm crazy or what? I'm like, are you serious? Like, I am crazy. I'm fucking dancing on a street and everyone is just like looking like, want to be me. They want to be the one dancing on the street, like mm -hmm. not caring what other people think. Social freedom, baby. Um, so, yeah, so you're just like you know yeah. just like exactly this <laughs> yeah. oh i would make you do social freedom so much <laughs> oh, love no, that. No, no. Uh, yeah i've done, too, can, much, I've, about I've done too much crazy things <laughs> yeah? in my life to be doing it now <laughs> you're socially free right <laughs> To, to a degree but yeah yeah I mean everyone wants to be more free right everyone oh god it's our natural <laughs> it's I think it's the yearning of humanity to feel more free than we actually are but um that yeah. might get deep deeper into other other areas but I think what you mentioned about being genuinely curious is is such a such a key skill in life I think you bond and connect with people so much more when you're curious and mm -hmm. actually I love the point you made about um you know you know the whole type thing and like people having a preconceived idea of what their type is and it's funny because I think a lot of that can sometimes come from not actually knowing what you really want deep down like deep in your heart and your soul you don't know and you have an assumption based on how maybe someone looks and from my own mm -hmm. experience the more like the more women that you meet you start to realize in that experience of meeting people actually what you like like what you actually deep down in your soul if you're being if you're being aware of what's going on in here you'll start to realize oh okay I really vibe with someone who has these kind of qualities or is uh has this type of personality as opposed to just how they look because I think for most guys we would we all have fallen in that bucket 
pretty like early on in our lives it's like is she hot is she not hot if she is I'm in if not I'm not interested <laughs> and then I think as you get older and a bit more experienced you start to realize there's a lot more there's a lot of other things that are important but you know what so a lot of people don't grow out of that so yeah I, I see the importance of that's what I wanted to say speak for yourself <laughs> yeah 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 so maybe yeah maybe that's just my my own perception of it um so uh what one of the things that um you know I mentioned earlier was about like the infills that you have and how fascinating uh a lot of those like documentary style um sessions are mm -hmm. um what's the most compelling story that or, or breakthrough that you've witnessed in your coaching like what's something that you look at and you were like wow I can't believe we had this experience together like you and the student and helping them overcome something like yeah and obviously no you don't you don't need to say any names or anything but it would be good to hear the kind of you know those uh, the the scale of the breakthroughs that you've had oh uh, it's very hard to pick one but I think it's very important to point out that we work with a lot of autistic people mm -hmm. a lot of virgins and a lot of guys who are discovering their sexuality on a way that maybe they don't know if they like guys or women mm -hmm. so I would say that it's a really big breakthrough every time for an individual because it's their own reality you know and and for me each one of them and I'm, I'm not just being diplomatic I'm honestly saying that each one of them when I experience their breakthrough through, which comes like usually after three days and everyone is collapsing and tired and crying yeah. well that's where you know that you hit the mark you know like hit a point and obviously we are keep pushing after a few more days um but for them for each one of them it's is a huge breakthrough and obviously i'm the woman and i'm the emotional one and i'm always crying at the end of the workshop mm -hmm. because i love them so much and it's just yeah. like i love everyone so much and i'm so proud of them seriously it's so mm -hmm. rare that a man does so much for himself and fighting so hard to be better um discovering their own masculinity be a better man and be a better man for the women as well um mm. but recently i had this experience where um, one of our students he didn't know if he actually likes men as well if he's bisexual mm. or if he's gay or whatever so i sent him to approach gay guys and mm. he was like blown away he had such a good time he was like, wow, if you don't make me do that, I would have never done it by myself. So yeah. again, it comes back to a point where it's about trust that he trusted me. He told me, mm. he came out to me, he opened up to me. And like that, I had the chance actually to do something with it. So yeah. that's, I think that's, that's, but all of them are so touching. Like you see, see where they come from, you know, see their struggles, see their fight individually. Like I love each one of them always, mm. always. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. You mentioned that about trust actually, because for those kind of moments to happen, you need to have a lot of trust because you're opening up a lot in those situations. Right. Is, mm -hmm. is, is there, is, is that something that you guys intentionally work on get, gaining from students? Like you intentionally, um, I guess, create trust with them or is it something that just seamlessly happens? Because I can imagine there's different levels because some people are very trusting. Like I'd like to think of myself as a mostly trusting person. Like I'll, um, I'll definitely yeah. be like looking out for shit, but mostly trusting. <laughs> But I know there's some people that might be like very, um, they might have a lot of walls just with that being able to be vulnerable. So what's your experience been like? Have you had to do anything specific to break down walls or uh, yeah, have you had those experiences where it's where you've had to take a bit of time to get to that point where those people trust you and, and what did you do? I think everyone has their own pace obviously in opening up but 
as I mentioned, the client files, what we make you fill out the first thing uh, before even coming to the workshop, it's kind of like preparing you for what's waiting for you. Um, mm. And actually, uh, it's, it's um, I don't know what kind of format it is, but you can't really save it and then come back to it. Like you can't do it like five minutes here, five minutes there. We really make you tune in to your mm. feelings, to go back to your childhood, to the relationships, everything you experienced. And it seriously takes two hours to fill it out. So mm. we already start something there on a way like, mm. okay, let's dig deep inside of you and let's see what you share. Obviously, money is a big motivation for a lot of people. Like they, they are like, oh, I'm paying for this shit. You know, I have to do what they tell me. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> like, just like, <laughs> trust me, like wasting all this money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So because of that, you know, they already start to open up. They already start the, the opening process. Mm. And when they, they, like our workshop is really well done, you know, James and Shay. And I don't think, I, I don't know, like Liam as well in the beginning, he was like, you know, they created like a frame to it where, it's like build up in a way where we reach the point of like opening up, then mm. they are totally prepared. Um, even in the orientation, like the first day, we have like uh, hours and hours of conversation, why someone is there, what they expect from the workshop, what are their fears. So we are face to face, all the coaches, all the students and all the spotlight is on you and it's time to shine. So. I don't really, you know, when we hit something sensitive area, then they are more like, okay, I don't want to talk about this now. Totally fine. We can move on and we will come back to it maybe two days later. We don't forget anything. We keep it like, okay, then we're going to come back and then let's see how he feels. Usually we don't have to do anything, to be honest, because they want our help. They need us. They, they, they start to like have this kind of, because we have an image in, in the dating scene already as a company. So yeah. that's giving trust already as well. Okay. So I think uh, it's the image, our energy, because obviously, as you see, like, like, how would you know what kind of person I am and my energy if you don't see me like this interacting with you, how I phrase my words, how I make you feel. Um, it's all adding up to the point where we don't have to fight so hard for them to open up, to be honest. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really true. I I get that. I like like you were just mentioning with the 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 branding and the just I guess the depth of content you have with how much everybody is showing themselves like that gives an air of trust and like a two hour form to fill in. Yeah, if you're if you're going through <laughs> that process <laughs> and oh, filling yeah. in stuff like writing about your fears and motivations and shit like that. You know, yeah, you're probably going to have less resistance. <laughs> um, and then obviously, yeah. if you're paying bare money for it, then all those things combined, you're probably not going to have as many issues. I guess, actually, it's quite a, a good mm -hmm. system for the business because it means that anyone who's coming is really about this shit. Like, they're really mm -hmm. about it. They're not playing games. So much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's, no, but it's good. Very good, like... I have to mention that you have a very good relating and very good observing. And I don't know if it's the TNL videos help you in your conversational <laughs> techniques or you maybe, are natural in it. Maybe mostly natural, but you know, you get a little nug few nuggets from other people. So I'll give that to nice. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I didn't think so because someone is just natural and you know, like you are doing a poll for a good reason so obviously I can tell like who's very like open and knowledge about something that we teach and I had to give you the credit that you definitely have a good skill for that so thank you thank you I, I appreciate that thank you uh this is this is really enjoyable I like this podcast I, I knew it would be I told you <laughs> in the DMs I was like I'm excited for this um 
and yeah like me too uh, yeah um what one of the things that I wanted to cover actually which um you kind of mentioned earlier actually speaks to your origins as um a hostess who turns up and finds out what the fuck I'm in a role play class what's going on here ah. <laughs> so um obviously we're we're in this era of identifying a lot of men who have had certain positions in industry or just certain positions who've been outed as creeps and then obviously we have the hashtag me too movement as well um which is which has a place in my opinion because some men are just moving very, very mad. Um, and it's good that they're being outed for the things that they've done, because obviously, yeah, it's a madness out here. Um, and while that's good in some sense, I know that there's also a lot of men who might be a bit more timid because they're worried about being labeled a creep. So when it comes to intimacy or showing like a physical intent towards a woman, they might actually feel a sense of worry because they don't want to be labeled alongside somebody who has bad physical intention for a woman. So how do you advise those people to healthily express their um, sexual desires? Well, first, um, obviously probably it comes from lack of experience I would say because mm. maybe they didn't have a lot of sexual experience they didn't have a girlfriend um experiencing and getting out there and just trying it it obviously helps and that's the first step in everything um and then owning your sexuality like let's figure out what you like stop watching for it stop ranking like these are the things what we are saying to most of like all of our students because we are like blowing out sexual energy constantly not we but like usually man uh growing up on porn you know and in you are used to the grab of your hand hand like when it comes to pussy it's not the same feeling it's like so many detailed things you wouldn't even think that it adds up to to why you cannot project your sexual intent <clears throat> so i would say that let's collect some sexual energy inside of you let it boil you know let's let's feel that testosterone <laughs> because women are <laughs> women are uh, naturally sensing these kind of things and we can go back to like the animalistic you know the pheromones that mm. we can we can feel we can smell we can we can tell if if a guy is like boiling of sexual energy just like you can tell if a woman is is boiling of sexual energy or is just acting mm. doesn't matter how i look like if you know i'm a starfish in the bed and then i don't, I don't know how to move and whatever um <laughs> so it's all about the energy and then definitely way easier it's not just men i'm telling you it's not just men uh, yeah. i'm always saying we should teach women but at the same time it's not really the market yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> maybe when more of those sex robots come in and guys give up with women, uh, and then maybe, maybe that's when it's gonna happen. But we'll see. That's oh, a dark future. Fuck me. That's a dark future. <laughs> but sorry, sorry. Go on. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so true. That's so true. But as you see, this is where the word is going. Like, I don't want to deal with women's shit anymore. You know, they have their period and they are sensitive and whatever. Well, let's just get a robot. You know, I can form her for my ideal, whatever. And then, okay, like that's that's unfortunately it's how our word is, and come back to the same like with porn. Mm. so we definitely tell our students not to masturbate and not to watch porn and let's see how you feel that can do miracles i'm telling you like obviously like blowing sexual energy constantly um it's not something that helps you to feel masculine to helps you feel hungry and when you get out there and approach women we want you to be hungry because otherwise what's your fuel What's, what's your motivation? How are you going to make women feel that you want them and we, we, we teach them how to project sexual intent like I want you, but if there is nothing behind, just like, you know, a floppy something, then no one is going to be interested. No one. Um, so 
collecting sexual energy, which, which also come back, uh, comes back to tantric practices. Um, if someone has a problem with um, this, then obviously we have tantric breathing techniques. We teach them kind of uh, a little bit of tantra, more like in our sex god master class. We teach more BDSM and tantric practices. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was um, a good plug there. Good plug. Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but it came to my mind because that's all about that. So that's another transformation mm. or something. Obviously, it's more thematic and and come back comes back to something like okay, let's talk about sex instead of like approaching or connecting or whatever. Mm. Um, so tantra, tantra is very good. I advise to everyone to try tantric breathing, do tantra with the woman, uh, breathe together, you know, learn about the PC muscle, PC pump, how to clench that area between your balls and your ass. Mm. Um, do your research. It's it's going to be a long podcast if I go into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like so many things that's already helping us if you think about as a generation what our parents mm. didn't have what their parents didn't have so actually we have so many tools meditation mm. self-healing everything is about self-discovering these days everything about therapists even fake whatever um holistic healing you know so many things to choose off and people don't think about these things like Tantra, for example, like, but I don't even know. They think Tantra is some kind of magical, unreachable, like two people rubbing each other together or whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> it's like, let's dance together and make it and let's rub each other to each other kind of thing. Um, Incense. But, and shit but like it's very that far from that. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so these things will actually make you feel more confident with yourself. Mm. And after half an hour of answering your question, I'm going to come to the point where I actually answer your question. And all that confidence will help you to be able to be brave enough to touch someone in a way where it feels good. Mm. Very comprehensive answer. I like that. <laughs> It just like happens. It's it's a Tiana yeah. fuckery. <laughs> it just yeah. happens like that. Yeah, I definitely have seen that in the videos. There's a tendency, like, there's a question that seems simple, but then it's like, <laughs> right, let's get the goggles out and let's get our like microscopes, and we're really gonna look at every single element of this. But <laughs> for people for people like me though, who are really curious and like learning, I think that's. I, I love that. I love not taking things to surface level and diving deep to find out what what are the different nuances and things going on within what seems like something simple. So no, why that's, do you that's... like that? Ooh, I, you know what? I don't know. I feel like um, I feel like when you do that, you can have a bit more understanding. Um, like for me uh like because things are so gray like uh, I guess a few years ago I kind of I came to the realization that things aren't things are definitely 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 not black or white there's a lot of gray nuances in everything that happens um and in that um if you explore those things you get more of an understanding of a particular topic or a particular question instead of just having like the answer to this is x or y or z full stop it's more like well there are these different things you can do and have these different outcomes and at the end of all that caveating that caveating that off and saying it's a suggestion i just like it because it means that you can you can be more relatable to a lot more people when you're talking about something right so yeah yeah, yeah more experience yeah. more knowledge yeah yeah what knowledge about, what is about power. you what about you why why would you say that's just something you're naturally gifted with like wanting to explore things at that level 
I don't like to put ourselves in categories, but I would definitely say like you or like me, you know, uh, I think we are empaths, like em- empaths. Do we say that? Yeah. Do we say that? I don't know. Sometimes yeah. my accent can be like funny and I'm not sure that, especially uh-huh. like, I'm so glad I understand you because I was so afraid, like British accent for me is just so hard to understand, but Seriously? yours is not that strong. So anyway, um, when you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm working with Australians, so imagine that. Yeah, true. They've, got the, they've got the twang. They've got the twang, so it's different. It's different, but yeah. Yeah, but they they've worked on their accents so much for for actually to be more understandable for the students and for <laughs> Chatley for me too. But um, I can I can hear your British accent, but it's not that strong. Like for example, we had we had a student recently, and I just told him, I don't understand anything what you are saying. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> Where, where was he what from? You're saying. Where was um, he from? <laughs> like in in Britain? Uh, oh, you. Co- I think outside in, I, um, outside. I think close to Birmingham. Oh my God! All right, I, I'm not trying to diss your student, but in in the UK <laughs> recently there was a poll which voted the worst accents in the country, and it said that Birmingham oh. was top of that list. So. But I think it's just because it can be hard to understand for people that aren't from the UK. But I, I love Brummies. I love I love Brummies. Like Brummies are Brummies are good people. Oh, uh, you have to Brummies say that. You are doing the podcast <laughs> here. No, I've got I've got friends from Brummie that I've got friends from Brum oh, that if fine. they heard me say that, they would get onto me. So now nah, shout out to my people from Brum. Smart. But yeah, it's a London <laughs> thing over here. So it's yeah, that's probably why. Um, yeah, he was like more from the outside area of Birmingham, so it was even like countryside-ish Birmingham. Yeah. And and just I just have to tell them like if I don't understand you, that definitely they won't understand you. So <laughs> they have to a little bit like slow down and you know articulate a little bit more. Um, yeah. But what was he? What, what, I don't remember what we were talking about. Um, we were talking about. Uh, well, <laughs> we were talking about. <laughs> um intimacy and physical intent but we we went off here let's come back now we're we're back in we're back in we're back in um so obviously in the time that you've um been working with tnl the dating landscape seems to have changed quite a lot and what i mean by that is obviously the pandemic happened and obviously a lot more people are using online dating now as a way to find people as opposed to, you know, meeting people out in bars or restaurants or in, in their day-to-day life walking around. Um, and one of the things I've also noticed is that there's a lot of content in today's world which seems to be creating a lot of a divide between the sexes male and female like there's a lot of polarizing content out there which is basically drawing a line in the dirt between men and women and making it a bit more antagonistic for both um, sexes against each other Um, I'd just be curious to know what your opinion of this is um, and how um, how you think we can address it as a as a society within within the context of dating just because you're in that in that field so you're seeing this probably at a deeper level than the normal person so i'd be curious to hear your thoughts uh, about like online dating and like real time dating you mean um yeah about like on about the landscape of dating so um online dating and then also the fact that there's a lot of content out there which is making it seem as though men and women are at war with each other Hmm. okay then I think it's everyone's choices what they decide to be brainwashed by it's your choice to have a tv it's your choice what you research on youtube if you want to feed your brain with this kind of fucking trash then you are at that level and, and you have to break out of that. I mean, everyone will do it eventually or not, but it's all about like what you feed your mind with. What do you look at on Instagram? What are you looking at? 
I don't have a TV. I'm not watching TV. I don't give a shit about all the bad news. Um, I'm, I'm not letting, you know, all this negative energy to surround me. And because then I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to spread it, helping this kind of uh, very bad system to just strengthen our word. And, and basically we, we built a house made of shit. You know, this is our word that this is what they are interested mm. about. Um, so mm. I would say that dividing men, women, feminists, whatever, is their reality. They, they have the right to think the way they do. And maybe they have their experience. Why do you think that way? We are living in a sexist world. We are living in a world where man is mm. the power. Um, yeah. Man, man has definitely more privileges than women. And you decide as a woman if you want to be a victim or not. Are you really a victim mm. or you just put your shit together or go out there and apply for that job, but you already think that you're not going to get because you are a woman or apply for a job, but actually you can fit in and prove yourself that actually you are smart and talented and you have all the qualities I have to prove myself constantly. Like Tiana is not perfect. You know, I'm working with men and, and mm. it's just something I decide to do. And I decide to be in that environment. I could decide to do all kinds of shit that just makes me more like a woman or I'm deciding to fight and, you know, face the, the YouTube commenters who are saying like, oh, a woman is teaching. And like, okay, whatever, you know, you can say whatever you want. I am choosing to be in this position and I'm not a victim. I'm, I'm a strong individual. I was always like that as a woman, you know, like whatever you decide to do, but like standing on your own two feet, be strong, feel strong. And it's not what other people think that makes you who you are. It's you who, who makes you think who you are. Like what you think about yourself, that's the truth. So I think it's a, this dividing subject, like, and feminism and, and whatever. Yeah, I, I, I accept that we are living in a world like that. And maybe people will at, at, attack me like, oh, you don't want to fight. Well, I'm fighting, you know, I'm fighting in my own <laughs> little bubble yeah. on, on my own way by being in a position where, where usually men would work or men allowed to work guess what? Mm. I don't care. And I'm still doing my job and I'm spreading love and I'm, I'm doing a lot of good in the world, helping a lot of people um, breaking out of their shells. And they are all thankful to me and they all come back to me like, oh my God, my life changed. So for all that, it's, it's really worth the, the fight, all the fight. And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming the guys making me feel like, oh, you're just a woman or whatever. Okay. Well, that's how they program their programming is my programming is that i'm not a victim i'm gonna keep fighting i'm strong individual woman i'm living in a world where usually man has the power but yeah. i have my own power so you can decide actually as a woman to have your own power start a business be creative we are very creative creatures you know women just don't even mm. know about their own qualities and or talents because they let themselves fucking brainwashed by everything and they believe that oh we are actually weak you know oh poor we let's feel sorry for ourselves because our ego wants us to feel that way mm. that's my answer to that wow wow it's um it's a powerful place to be at when you know that even though the odds are stacked against you that you can still find a space to go actually even with all that shit i'm still doing my thing I don't care what is going on out here. I'm, I'm imposing myself on the world. And in an, and a side effect consequence of that in a good way is that you actually could inspire a lot of people, a, a lot of women who might be looking at you thinking, okay, Virag's doing her thing. I'm going to do my thing as well. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on my mission, whatever so. that is. And <laughs> then a lot of men who might have an impression of women look at you and think, Raw, yeah, actually, despite all the reasons that she would not be working in this industry, for example, or would not express herself authentically, she's still doing that. So, fuck, like, what what excuse could I have as a man not to? Do you know what I mean? 
So <laughs> that's um that's yeah, powerful. Yeah. yeah, that's powerful. Thank you. Um, you have to have uh, the intelligence and the emotional intelligence to realize this thing. What you just said, like what you have your intelligence and you see these things, but you know, many people they don't get to a point where they even think about like any empathetic way. How does it feel to the other person? You know, mm. how, how do I make them feel? What's my my presence in this world? Like, do I want to step over women just because they they were born as, as women? Mm. Like, just like, what what's your reason? It's the same, same I think, with the racism and, mm. and same, like, making people feel with, or making people feel different for something they were born with and, and at the same time they can be beautiful people like it's just for yeah. me it's just an amount of stupidity and i don't think that stupid people will survive for a long time i really think that <laughs> the strong people survive and just like nature you know the strong survives um so let's see what happens <laughs> yeah it's an interesting point you know um on what you were just saying because um yeah i know uh i don't know if you know this guy gary v maybe yes no okay he's like a I guess the best way I can describe him he's like a he's a businessman who makes self-development content he's a very good marketer but he makes a lot of self-development content and he recently wrote a book called 12 and a half and in this book he's saying right everything in the world is now becoming commoditized which is talking to your point everything in the world is becoming commoditized in terms of ability to learn skills um products manufacturing all this stuff is becoming commoditized so that you don't actually need to be super skilled to make a difference in those areas and instead what's now more important in the workplace and probably in life is emotion and intelligence and that is rising to the top as being one of the mo most important skill sets that a human will need mm -hmm. in the modern workplace soon so you could be mm -hmm. onto something there, Greg. I'm gonna check out Gary. I'm sorry, Gary, I never heard about you, but I'm gonna <laughs> check you out now. <laughs> you sold him to me. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I think you I think you'll find him interesting because he's got a very um uh he's got a lot of energy and he seems like he can be a bit um harsh, like a, a, like his the way he delivers his message can sound I like harsh. That. Oh, <laughs> you, trust me, you're gonna love him. Like when you when you look him up, tell me what you think of him because Okay, yeah, I, I, like him. I like it. I like it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting um, interesting phenomenon he's brought up there. So I think this one's quite interesting because I definitely know that there's some guys in that I've met in my life that have had the same idea. So a lot of men who would have watched RSD when they used to exist, or TNL, or any other dating channels really believed in their heart that they had what it takes to be a dating coach um and for someone who's listening they might still have that idea or they think they can or should be a dating coach so what what kind of things would you advise for them to work on so that they know they're actually ready because obviously some people aren't and then deliver some really bad shit to other guys out there in the world so what kind of things do you think is important for someone who believes they they want to be a, a, a dating coach for men. <laughs> when you were saying this, I was just sort of thinking that everyone wants to be a dating coach. <laughs> and then we just say like, stand in a line, motherfucker. You know, like just stand in a line. It's like <laughs> I don't know if I can speak like this in your channel. Yeah, You yeah, will like yeah. beep, beep all the time or whatever. It's you like can say whatever the, the fuck you want. <laughs> okay, you can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> One of our students told me, like, yeah, like you say fuck so many times, you know, like, I don't know if it's a good thing. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. So, um, yeah. yeah, so it's a lot of people actually, because once they they meet with us, I don't know like what's a bad dating coach or coaching or whatever, but for some reason, everyone thinks that they can do it. Um, but then let me tell you this. You need to have actual skills to teach people, to listen, to understand, to see the problems through, and to be totally non-judgmental. 
We are not judging people for their whatever opinion, your their experiences, whatever is happening to them. And like, if you think about it, how many people do you know who's non-judgmental, hundred percent? Not many. <laughs> not many. Yeah, it's very hard, very hard, because this is what, how we grow up and learn and compare constantly and and being in competition. But um, I would say that it's a lot of skills altogether that takes a good coach and to actually be able to communicate, to be, you know, like not telling people what to do, but guide them towards the answer. So that's very, very tricky. That's a very tricky, trippy business because obviously you can get like in situations where you find a coach or a master because obviously in, in uh, martial arts you have masters um, or even in spiritual teachings mm. and I just have to say that's an experience as well you know we have to experience bad and good and in having a kind of balance in life that's a learning experience as well you can't really prevent life uh, giving you that kind of experience you're not going to have only good masters you're not going to have only good coaches whatever so mm. i would say that they are just part of the matrix you know bad teachers mm. good teachers balance and because of that you have to have that experience for a good reason for a good case and stay still be brave Go experience and go until you find a good teacher who's speaking your language. Because maybe I don't speak your language. Maybe I'm, my mm -hmm. teaching skills are different. Um, actually, this student, I just had this uh, three-day intense workshop and it's like one-on-one -on -one and you know, I'm the only coach, he's the only student. Yeah. He was like very honest and he told me like oh when they sold me the workshop you know they said that Virag is the the residential coach in Budapest and I'm, I'm having um uh workshops in Miami as well but then he was judgmental he was like oh you know the girl coach or whatever but oh, he was telling me this I I really appreciated it because he was genuine and then he just yeah. said like you know what I'm pretty sure it happened for a good reason because you speak my language and none of the crew, you know, we all have different kind of uh, skill set and way of teaching. And I know who comes to me. I really believe in this, that the person who needs to come to me will come to me. And it's for a good reason. So I knew that he came to me for a good reason. And he, even he realized that he came to me for a good reason, because I could touch those parts. I could tell him things in a way where it hit you the most. Um, so... Maybe I'm not the perfect coach for you, but I'm a, a perfectly, uh, you know, well-skilled coach for another person. And that's just the way it is. You can't really um, tell before anything happens to you that, like, how would you decide before? You're going to run mm. into bad experiences, but still be brave and experience and get out stronger and go until you find your master or good coach. Mm. So shit coaches, keep doing what you're doing. You're all <laughs> part of the universal picture. <laughs> oh, you're too funny. <laughs> but there's a lot of truth in that, you know. <laughs> they they <laughs> they serve they serve a function. Because in in like mm -hmm. you said, I I love that. Um it's it's quite similar to how I think about like me doing this podcast or anyone that does anything that has been done by someone before, like even, for example, we're having this conversation right now and maybe there's another person who has a podcast. They might not be as charming as myself, but go on, they're doing their own podcast and they're interviewing like a day. No, not, they have no chance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, but they, they might believe that uh, they, they might be having the same conversation, but because of the cadence and the slight little different ways they communicate or the different words they use, that conversation might hit differently for some people than it would for others. And my podcast might hit differently for some people, which is why I feel like even though this is like the same conversation, who knows what, like how this might hit someone like right when they needed it 
in for the exact topic they were thinking about, like bang resonates and then they're on into the next part of their journey. So I guess with the coaches, same kind of thing in it. Someone might go to that yeah. coach and what that coach is specifically good at, even if they're shit at a lot of things, might be the thing that helps that person the most. Or if it's not the best experience, they seek out coaches like yourselves who are experts and then that leads them on a trajectory that's actually beneficial, but they needed to have that first bad experience. So yeah, yeah, I hear you. It's a very holistic way to look at that (laughs) situation. And that's why it's so beautiful what you do as well, because exactly for what you're saying, that you never know like who you're going to help. And that's your part in the whole picture. Like if we talk about purpose and what's what's someone's purpose, which is I think a very good question to ask someone, like what why do you think you are here? Um that's I think everyone should find their purpose. How can we give back to the world? How we can help each other, you know, instead of hating each other and like falling into the negativity trap. Let's make something positive, let's unite, you know, and, and that's how you spread your love and your help and could be that purpose and I think it's really fucking great from you that you started the podcast and for that kind of reason it's just it's really something that no way it's not gonna work or not gonna go through because you are really motivated from the heart and I can feel that like you're so passionate and when you say like yeah this is how it's gonna touch another person and it's exactly that positive feed of the energy that's gonna make you successful oh Thank you so much, Rurag. Thank you. I really, uh, I really I think that. this way. Thank you. So just thank keep so keep doing your purpose and your beautiful work, really. Yeah, and thank you for including me in it. <laughs> of course, of course. You've got such a you've got such a great energy, and it comes through in the videos. And like, thank you're you. very um open and expressive, and like I love being able to explore these like ideas and and topics <laughs> with you um I remember watching because I know there's a video you have with James Marshall recently where you I think it's like an hour and a half or something like that and in that video I was like wow this was incredible to watch um oh, and so I'm glad you. to <laughs> I'm glad to have this experience with you now and it, it's funny you, you mentioned that because you know sometimes I think as a content creator and, and maybe you've had this as well um in your line of work where sometimes you might question the impact you're having and you might be like is what I'm doing actually helping like is is like maybe not so much in your case because you're seeing that shit live and direct but for Mm -hmm. me sometimes it looks like oh am I having impact but then you know sometimes you have to take the little wins where they come um where someone might say oh I really I listened to this and um you know it really helped me. Like I have a podcast where I talk about my process of starting and someone that I went, someone that I used to work with a few years ago in Edinburgh, he just messaged me randomly like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm starting a podcast. I listened to your one because me and my friends want to start, but we're scared. And I'm like, whoa, this is, that's trippy. That is trippy. So I guess you never know the impact you could have on someone. Um, And if we're going to bring it full circle, back to the topic at hand for those guys who <laughs> wait, are like, wait 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 <laughs> I wanted yeah. to add to that and you can you can get to it after that yeah. but um I think it's a natural reaction and it's very humble from you to question yourself sometimes because you know if you were arrogant about it and you would be like oh I fucking know what I'm doing and for sure it's doing something good like see your love because you can't imagine even being like that so I think questioning yourself and and I'm saying for those times when you feel that way just you know accept that feeling and take it as something natural and good and okay I'm humble enough to question myself you know I'm not like blind and I really want to do good that's the proof of that you want to do good so just allow the feeling you know think about it think it through and then you're going to come back to the point where you're like okay actually what I'm doing is good and then just remember even this moment that we talk about it and you know this can be all like a trigger and and the memory like wow actually I'm doing so fucking good Mm. Mm. yeah I felt that one you know 
I felt that. <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, you can get, it's easy to get to that place where you're like, oh shit, uh, what's going on? What am I doing? Uh, but yeah. It's not yeah, normal. I'll take that seed. Um, but yeah, like, I guess to take it full circle um, and talking about impact, even for the men out there who might be feeling that fear or the block blockages within them to improve their dating life maybe they're thinking in their heads are oh, you know the woman that I want isn't interested in me they never know if they go and speak to someone what kind of impact they'll have right they never mm-hmm. know they never know exactly I'm sure you've seen that's that the so core. many times Thank you for saying that. That's the core yeah. motivation of what we are doing. We are not really, we are, as you said, we are not a result orientated in a way that let's collect the most numbers, let's fuck the most women. We don't mm-hmm. do that. What we do is first, this is a positive energy exchange. You never know what that woman is thinking about or whatever. Maybe it's a grandma, grandpa. We, we're not saying like only to connect, you know, with women. We're like, have a chat with the grandpa, you know, at the vegetable shop. It's like, mm. let's let's figure out how they feel and make them feel good because that good energy is going to feed your energy and you're going to feel amazing that you changed someone's day. So exactly what you're saying that every one of us have the power to make a life better, a day better, give someone a beautiful moment, just like giving a compliment, you know, even if it's a woman who's um, not totally attractive to you or whatever, but then, then you see, like, I can't stand. If I see like a sad face, I'm like, and I'm with the student as well, of course, I'm like, go and give, give her a compliment, you know, and straight, you see like everybody's smiling. Everyone is very receptive because it doesn't happen many times that someone just comes to us genuinely and, and saying like, wow, how are you feeling? You know, I saw that you are looking down. You so you seem so sad. Are you okay? And it just happened recently and happens many, many times. And they just get surprised, like, you know, a stranger comes up to them and just asking like, how are they feeling? But, but the bigger picture is that they are being noticed. And that is just so brightening. And, and then they smile. And even if they, if they say, no, I have a boyfriend or whatever in any kind of interaction, they come out with a smile like this, like, ah, oh, you know, I just got a compliment. Yeah. And, you know, a man wants me and it feels so good. And <laughs> exactly what you're saying. Like, we, we always tell everyone, have fun, enjoy. Mm-hmm. This is not something that you shouldn't enjoy and, like, shaking and just, like, you know, being afraid of everything what you're doing. Have fun mm-hmm. at the same time. Because it's mm-hmm. fun. It's so much fun. It's like, wow, I'm powerful. I'm making people feel good and, you know, just spreading love. And it's it's amazing one sentence that that can do to a person. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know the feeling for sure. Like, just bringing that <laughs> energy is, um, you both win. Every Like, everyone can win in that. There doesn't need to be a loser because everyone just... <laughs> exactly enjoys on that vibe so yeah yeah um so uh the last question i have for you very again it's yeah it's been oh no you're out of questions i know i know i I didn't even (laughs) ask anything you know what it's because i have it's because i have so many that i'm like maybe in a in a in a time in the future maybe a part two makes sense maybe a part two makes sense but um, <laughs> at least for for this episode, um, the last question I actually have for you, which um, would be interesting to know, because I feel uh, intuitively that maybe it's a different, to a degree that it's a different um, lane. But have you ever thought about the possibility of switching and becoming a dating coach for women? Because women are probably equally struggling in the market and there's probably a lot of women that need help too um and from my own perception it looks like maybe the things that you would tell a woman would be different for a man like more more often than not maybe um but yeah it would be interesting to see how you think about that other lane and whether you would take it up yourself I'm very happy to help women and I'm constantly helping women around myself, like friends and, you know, who comes for help. And it was kind of always my role in my social circle. 
So that's mm-hmm. how I always knew, like, okay, I'm I'm kind of good at this. Like somehow it just works. Yeah. Um, just coming for advice in in so many areas. Um, but I would say that you know it's you know exactly how hard it is to build up something uh, from scratch, like on your own. Um, start a market where market where actually there is no market for this. Like women are not the hunters, men are the hunters. Women are the ones who's getting approached. So if if I'm gonna do one day something um, for women, I would definitely do something more uh, like connecting to their femininity, which I also have to learn for myself because because I've been always more masculine than feminine. Uh, for myself, for other people, I was like the mother energy and all kinds of things. But for myself, I was I was yeah. always more masculine energy. So um, I had already like different kind of vision of how to empower women. You know, it's not really like dating wise mm. could could lead that that way. Like how to behave with man. You know, how to stay uh, feminine towards man. But I think women don't really struggle with that, to be honest, in a way that we are more feelers um, than, than we are more naturally in touch with our senses than, mm. than men. Yeah. So um, because, of, because of that area, you know, we, I think we discover our body and our feelings um, a little bit faster than, than usually men do, probably, like, like mm. you know, all the part of the body and what feels good and whatever. Um, so if I do something like that, obviously it could be like, you know, so many areas, like if do you want to be a therapist, you know, for all kinds of people, it doesn't have to be like men or women, but that's more like a holistic healing kind of therapist with hypnotherapy, because I'm very into that as well. Um, and different kind of subconscious work, which is, um, I just discovered recently, uh, access bars, uh, which is like, again, what subconscious it's it's um basically they touch 32 points on your head opening up different kind of energetical channels and cleansing the subconscious mind in a way that you just basically have to lay on a table and just feel what what feels it's crazy what you feel while they are doing it wow. with their finger so it's like <laughs> oh shit and, i thought uh, it was like a machine or something like that but, no 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 but there is like even that um what is that something like what response therapy something like that with the machine where it's like vibrations uh going to you like you are wearing actually some kind of things that you are connected to a machine and that's just like giving a response and feedback with the vibrations and then with the machine they can do stuff which is also great because i tried it too um Mm. but once again like it's a lot of things that, that can lead to like helping men, helping women. I don't think that the women women side would be could be could be a um, relationship, you know, like how to manage mm. a relationship, how to behave in a relationship, um, yeah. which is which is another subject to talk about because uh, many of the students they wait for me to create my own relationship course in Tiana, like to take it more forward after like dating life and okay and what if I meet someone because most of them they uh they actually their aim is not to fuck a lot of women their aim is to at the end find a partner find love find something valuable you know stay together with someone experience how it feels to be connected with someone um and then because of that like you know taking it to relationship um course levels <laughs> yeah. but first I have to learn to manage my own relationship and then I'm like okay I did that because we are doing all <laughs> kinds of shit with my boyfriend to like <laughs> you know like he's working on himself so much I'm too and I think that's that's just love like that's real love when you see that the other mm. person is working so much on himself and me too I think that's the ultimate love when you realize you have to work on yourself to meet halfway with someone you actually want to work on it with <laughs> mm. I mean maybe you don't need to wait so long to start because I think even just that awareness is is already quite a lot um because uh, yeah. even even I know like some of the relationships I see and it's definitely uh I I've, I actually probably think that within this industry and, and 
and it's not it's something that you guys definitely talk about a lot but I think just generally within like this industry of if we lean more towards like pickup industry there's not as much attention on actually the management of your relationship and what it takes to actually cultivate a really um a really good container for the both of you and how both of you can like facilitate that um and I actually think mm-hmm, that based on exactly. the relationships that I've seen whether that's mm-hmm. like, friends I, I ain't calling no one out though <laughs> but whether that's oh. friends or, or other outside people um and seeing how they're not being aware of how both of them are like really harming each other and they're not like addressing that I think being at that point where you are with your boyfriend and you're already consciously addressing that maybe you don't need to wait so long maybe you could do the product yeah. already maybe maybe I'm pretty sure I could yeah and and you know it's just like all about structuring it like putting a frame to it yeah. and and just like giving a structure what obviously James has to accept and say like oh it's fucking amazing but he doesn't believe in so much of relationship or whatever like <laughs> what I would be about <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah. I have to it's not just about me doing something great I have to bring it through the whole system yeah <laughs> oh yeah 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 the idea and then the execution within the business you're in yeah well yeah. <laughs> I'm sure with with time with time you'll get it done I'm sure I'm sure yeah um but I'm I'm good in touching his heart so I'm not afraid like if I put something really good together because I can already be already like be thankful so thankful for him to like giving me this opportunity imagine um mm. could have been a risk for him and he could have got like hatred for him but he just didn't give a shit obviously he didn't get it because yeah. I proved myself but mm. every day like every day or other day he's just getting messages from me like oh I'm so thankful and just like yeah. constantly just like laughing like how thankful I am but I really am because I find my I found my purpose he gave me the opportunity and through that when you when you feel that you can actually do something what's really you and just give 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 and it's working and people are happy and it just he gave all that to me with this position wow. So I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe I put something together and he's going to be like, no, oh, okay, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is really beautiful though. You know, when, when, like when people believe in you and then you find some, like you find purpose in that and both of you win from it. I, I can't, I, I think it's one of the most beautiful things in life. Like when, when 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 that happens like when people really trust or put their trust in you to do a job for them and bring you in and and then it actually works and it and yeah. and both people are reaping the f- fruits of it and then your clients as well are really reaping the fruits and because it's such a personal thing like yeah that trumps I mean I know a lot of people worship money I was having a conversation with my roommate the other day and uh, today actually <laughs> and we were talking about how money is such a huge religion in the world just just generally speaking but when you have moments like that I think that surely surely that part of the human experience trumps all of that shit exactly Um, exactly and um just wanted to say the um, right yeah sorry kind of you um no go go ahead go ahead no just just adding to that like like having people around you like like your roommate you know people who you agree with this in things and then supporting you like that's again like something so assuring that what you think is just like you're not the only one with this and and because of that there's still hope in the world that it's not gonna be so fucked up hopefully <laughs> that that there are people who thinks like you and your roommate um and and yeah of course like like having big supporters for me James Shay and even Garrett Jones and obviously my boyfriend like they are just so mm-hmm. much you know when someone understands you when when someone makes you feel like you're you're unique in a way how much you give and on the way you give like having all these people around you and make you feel fucking unstoppable that's just mm-hmm. essential in I think any area in life like you cannot do this alone <laughs> yeah yeah you could but let's see what you can do and achieve with people like that around 
on your own is it's very difficult I, I, actually because you mentioned it i know i know we're running over time so i hope it's okay for me it's to okay. ask this question it's totally um, fine that's <laughs> yeah i like because you mentioned obviously um uh like your boyfriend is very supportive was that was it difficult to talk mm-hmm. about the work that you do to your boyfriend and tell him listen this is this is my job this is my purpose was that a difficult conversation because I can imagine for like even even myself mm-hmm. if I was thinking about me in the same situation I'd be like so how do I tell my girlfriend that I'm helping guys <laughs> approach girls um learn how to date learn how to meet women sleep with women build relationships how do I tell her that I would I would be at a bit of a it would be a tough convo. So how how do you, how is it for you? <laughs> it's a very good question and I'm going to blow your mind. He was a student of us, so I didn't have to explain anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> oh, yeah. Yo! Yo, yo. Take your time. That's mad. <laughs> that is mad. Rah. It is. Yo, <laughs> big up to your boyfriend though, because that's 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 sick. That's sick. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he must be because obviously, as as the guys going in on the on the workshop, you might be thinking, right. She's the coach. She's off limits. But he thought, nah, Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be that guy. (laughs) (laughs) No, actually, no. I mean, it's just like another story of like, it just happened like that. You know, it wasn't like, because I was very strict and I am still very strict. Like, I'm not doing anything with students. I don't look at them. Like, like, obviously, I can see if someone is attractive or or whatever. But I'm never like, oh, I want to fuck that guy. Obviously, that would be very unprofessional. Um, But like how life you know turns out and brings people together we happen to meet in totally random time in totally random different country with his friends and my friend and just like like going from like he took the workshop and a few months later we ended up accidentally like i don't believe in accidents but (laughs) accidentally meeting in montenegro you know when when how like how many times it can happen in your life where yeah. it's pandemic it's fucked up but guess what montenegro is welcoming people you can still travel and party and you can find countries where they didn't close and they didn't give a shit about covid um mm. so yeah that became a kind of like centered like party place <laughs> oh, and it's wow. very reachable from hungary yeah, yeah i didn't even um, have a clue about this i had no idea this was happening was, fucking hell this this is what happens when you're in these inner circles right yeah <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> yeah exactly um but you know what i didn't even tell uh the guys for a while because i didn't even know like just because you're attracted to someone or you are having fun with someone you are still discovering the other person uh, outside of the workshop obviously um it doesn't course, mean yeah. that it has to be something or it's going to turn into something but i would say that you know it's just like it happened to be like that we kept in contact we started to video chat in those times mm. europeans couldn't go to america americans couldn't come to here so we actually started to video chat a lot and through mm. video chat it became a long distance relationship and wow. it, it just really turned out like in a way it was so natural like okay let's do this let's do that and you have like magical moments together and then just you know that okay this is my person so mm. again I'm very thankful for for the universe and James and TML because like it's unbelievable that I had to meet my American boyfriend in Ukraine and like see him in Montenegro because the workshop was in Ukraine by the way yeah. <laughs> wow and i know it's fucking crazy when you put it like that <laughs> that's some destiny shit man that is some exactly. destiny shit yeah. yeah even if someone who doesn't believe in destiny like like he was like that in the past now he does <laughs> 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 it's just the proof itself yeah wow that is amazing <laughs> so um that answers your question that 
that it just had to happen like that, that I didn't have to explain myself to anyone. He knew exactly how it feels. I was the one telling him, go and approach women. You know, you did too smart too much. You are a nice guy. And this and this and this. He went wow. through everything. Wow. <laughs> that, if anything, yeah, that is, an, that is actually the clearest indication for someone who wants to learn to learn. Wow. This has just given me the maddest brainwave. For anybody, because <laughs> there must be so many guys that must be like, oh, but if girls find out that I do this thing, then they're not going to, I'm not going to find love. No woman's going to, like, this is the sign. Because <laughs> you co- you saw him when he came through mm-hmm. and he was trying to get better. And still, still, despite all the stuff that a lot of people might think, you guys are building a relationship together now and through serendipity and all these things you're able to build something even after being like in that position of coach student where it's like okay I'm the expert here Mm -hmm. I'm leading you it's a it's a it's a lesson for anyone just like just do your mm-hmm. thing, man. Things will happen. Exactly. Yeah. And and, wow. and don't let yourself be stopped by anything. Like, seriously, we had all the COVID, the country differences, you know, we had to be like brave enough because I really love my job. I wouldn't want to lose my job over something like this that, you know, I cross a line or something. Yeah. Like, I never know how, how uh, James would react or like, I, I wouldn't even cross a line like that. But you have to be ballsy again, like to risk on the way that, okay, now I feel that this is something serious. I'm not just like fucking around. Then let's face this. And obviously I told James and and Shay and the guys, and they were like, basically like, okay, well, he's a hot guy. We are not surprised. (laughs) Good luck. You know, they took it like way lighter than how I would feel that. Oh my God, they're going to be freaked out and whatever. What what did I do? Um, (laughs) But, you know, like not living in the same country and um, like all Mm -hmm. kinds of differences because of like America is quite far from Hungary. It's still Mm -hmm. a kind of struggle for us to manage because of 90 days here, 90 days there, constantly traveling. Um, so it's like up to you if you really want to do that with someone, you know, on your side. And does mm-hmm. that thing what you have together worth all the effort and all the fight? If you don't want to do it, then fuck off, do your thing, you know, find someone else that's easier. But I, I have to say, like, we're choosing every day to fight for this. We really do. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that's the secret to all kinds of relationships yeah yeah an old man once told me that the reason that he's been with his wife for so long is because they just stayed they just chose to stay they just chose to stay and that that is it Uh, it's a choice uh, it's a choice um exactly you have the choice yeah (laughs) this has been an amazing podcast for you honestly like i'm so looking forward to listening back to this (laughs) um and you you've been saying thanks to James and if I look at it from the universal view that we just did about your serendipity I'm thankful to my my friend for sending me James video I'm thankful to James for building (laughs) TNL and making the channel and I'm thankful to him bringing you on board and I'm thankful for you for being on the podcast today because you've been amazing (laughs) and I'm sure that there's a lot of men out there I'm sure there's a lot of men out there that can that might be hit with that spark or with that thing that strikes their chord from listening to this today Um, and for those people that have had their (laughs) chord struck where can they find you where can they find your shit this is the opportunity to plug everything (laughs) here's, here's a stage for you Thank you, thank you. And thank you for having me. Seriously, I enjoyed it so much and you have such amazing questions. And finally I can talk about it with someone. Finally, someone yeah. has the right questions, you know, and just like let it out. Um, so thank you for giving me the space and trusting me, just like the trust I was talking about in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You decided to give that trust to me as well, like fucking picking a female coach out of five guys. Um just being curious from my perspective I think you are very emotionally intelligent and you have 
so much intelligence just even to create something like this you know prepare how much you prepared like with your questions all of them personal and and hitting hitting the spot like like I didn't feel even for a second that we are talking about like fucking superficial, uh, just chitty chat, you know, like we are wasting time <laughs> here. I think it's all gold that, that you, that you wanted to talk about. So good job. And thank you so much. Sissy, I enjoyed it so much, so much. I'm, I'm glad. I'm um, really glad you did. I'm really glad. Thank you. So I'm thankful that you give me this space and, and choose me. And I'm going to make sure that the Shay is getting back to you. <laughs> Come um, on, say we got a chat, bro. We got a chat about <laughs> the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's his um, uh, his subject as well. Yeah, but um, so, yeah, where can um, people find yeah, you? Yeah, so basically, basically, um, I'm just trying to create more light in here, but uh, whatever for the end of it, it's just like yeah, like that. Um, obviously, we have uh, the Natural Lifestyles uh, page where we can like you can see like even connect uh, contact james alex shay uh, or me and um obviously our sales team is handling everything so if someone wants to just you know con- contact uh, us in a way that okay i want to talk about virax shit then the sales team is gonna um hit me up and tell me that okay there is someone who's interested uh, mm. okay just freezing for a second. So yeah, it's, it's the way. And uh, I mean, my Instagram is private, but like if I see that someone wants to add me and I see it's okay, it's legit or a student or whatever, then my Instagram is the Virag in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, all, we all have our funny names, Alex over the ocean and Liam in the yeah. cloud and the James Marshall, the Garrett Jones, liberated oh, Shay Matthews. <laughs> I didn't even realize that in the clouds and in the over the ocean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go on. But it's not even like I don't know if for them it's on purpose, but for me it's not on purpose in a way. Like we never really talked about it to do this to uh, get there. Just turn out like we are the same fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and obviously it it. Uh, <laughs> it uh, shows the interest of like each person and I'm very connected with nature I love the forest I love to be in the woods I would be just like out there naked and walking around or dancing around a fire or something because it's just like so easy to feel good in nature so for me it's the reason Mm. that I'm in the woods (laughs) yeah and obviously Virag is my name and it means flower in Hungarian. So if someone doesn't know how to write that, just translate flower to Hungarian, and you're gonna get your answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Virag in the Roots Instagram or TNL page. Um, I think even on our YouTube uh, page, actually, all um, videos has this link under where it leads to the Natural Lifestyles uh, website. But anyway, you can, you can, you know, like if someone wants to make a call, like our sales team and Alex is our, our part of our sales team, Liam is part of our sales team. Like we have a few guys who's a coach as well and Mm -hmm. happy to talk to anyone. You know, we don't even want to sell anything. People come to us and we sell them if they want to. But if you want information on anything, then that's the way to go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, (laughs) <laughs> thank you again thank you again Virag. thank and, you too uh for my growth gang listening out there i hope you enjoyed the <laughs> podcast if you liked it please like please subscribe please share the shit out of this um you know we're trying <laughs> to grow out here and i appreciate every one of you that's watching and supporting so i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and i'll catch you on the next episode bless